The final presentation this afternoon will be from the Biomedical Prevention Scientific Working Group. Mary? Okay, well, they're last but not least. Um, so, um, my name is Mary McKellar, John Mitchell. We are the directors of the Duke CFAR Biomedical Prevention Scientific Working Group. And so, the SWIG is a little different than the CORES. And um, for a while, we had to grapple with the definition of what a SWIG really was. But the official definition is that it's a group comprised of investigators who share a common interest or interests and goals and participate in competitively funded research. And so that's our um, goal here. Oop, I don't know what I'm doing. Somehow I got into a weird thing. There, okay. Okay, so I'll first give you a little bit of the background and I'm gonna do the first couple slides and then have John jump in. Um, so it was established in 2017, our SWIG, and Amy Corneli served as a director. I was a co-director at that point, and um, we've had 23 members uh, from multiple disciplines, and some notable accomplishments in our first run, our first two, two years, I guess. Um, we did hold a summit that perhaps some of you participated in. It was, I thought, fabulous. Um, we had 104 people attend. It was actually called the PrEP Summit. And we did it in conjunction with UNC. UNC actually has a PrEP SWIG as well, led by Christopher Hurt. And we are, um, a, I think, very successful collaborators. Uh, and this joint conference had researchers, healthcare providers, there was community activists, students, um, social workers, and I, I thought it was a great success. We also had a, a joint uh, UNC Duke CFAR Prep Developmental Award too, and this came out actually based on discussions that we had in the summit, and we developed and managed. Uh, we developed the award together, um, UNC and Duke, and then the idea was there would be one investigator from Duke, my friend right here, and an investigator from UNC who um, together uh, work on a project, and so uh, they are now studying community a community based approach to understand prep care in at-risk adolescents, correct? Mm -hmm. With Marie Stone. So we have two aims in this current funding cycle. Our first aim is to foster interdisciplinary, collaborative biomedical HIV prevention research among new and established HIV and non-HIV investigators within Duke and across institutions with a focus on populations at risk for HIV in the southern US. So no, we are, we're highlighting the word southern US too. We're uh, really trying to hone in since we are here in the south and th we, there's a lot of attention on the south that we um, are in the perfect place for that. So the activities to reach the same, we are hosting HIV prevention networking activities. We are gonna continue to foster the collaborations with UNC um, because why not? And in fact, perhaps we'll have another summit over at UNC. Um, and we've, we're widely pr promoting our SWIG. And actually, the SWIG is not just for Duke people. We invite people outside of Duke to join the SWIG as well. And the other thing, too, um, because we've had feedback on our prior applications, that we need to increase our social media presence. So we took a big leap. And actually, now we have a Twitter account, which has actually been quite fun, I have to say. It's my first attempt. I think I did all my tweets in like one day just like somebody else. And, uh, but it's, we're trying to get more people uh, to join in and um, there's our address, or what do you say? Handle. Handle. There's our handle. We also have a website, but it's on the CFAR page and there's a link to our Twitter account as well as a way to actually email us directly to get on a, our mailing list. And so uh, for our second aim is to support innovative and rigorous biomedical HIV prevention research among Duke investigators. Uh, this is through providing opportunities for peer contribution uh, during the research development and implementation stage. And so uh, the way that we try to facilitate that is to have hold these 
uh, monthly meetings, uh, monthly SWIG meetings. So it's every second Friday of every month, one to two o'clock at the Haynes House, room 160. Uh, so uh, it's, it's open. Anyone is free and welcome to come and join us and participate. Uh, the activities uh, out of these six, so one through four, are kind of at the um, on the pre-funding stage, and so encouraging investigators to develop a joint SWIG research proposal, um, assisting investigators in the development of new research ideas, and then also the development of new grant applications, and then also to, to link up investigators over that process. And then five and six are kind of at the, the post-funding stage, so uh, providing support during the implementation aspect. Um, I know I've benefited from that um, already, um, and encouraging ways to disseminate research findings as well to the broader scientific community. Um, so you can see here, so this is a list of uh, funded SWIG-related grants since 2017. Um, so there's been 13 um, uh, in this time frame. Um, uh, nearly, if you kind of look through the, the, the titles of these studies, these are, these are prep-related. We had uh, four in 2017, five in 2018, four so far in 2019. So we've got two more to go to keep it going, one more each year and to keep that momentum going. Um, but that's looking pretty good so far. And then also during our SWIG meetings um, and communications in between, we go over grant funding opportunities that pop up in different areas, including an investigator sponsored research, uh, such as through pharmaceutical companies, uh, such as this Gilead announcement here, and then also through NIH opportunities. Uh, and here's a couple of examples, one of which came through NIDA uh, recently, and one of which came through NIMH. And so this is, this is who we are, and we, we're in a great community with a lot of wonderful expertise that uh, is very complimentary, and um, we're here to help facilitate that and continue to move that forward. So we welcome anyone to reach out to, to Mary, to reach out to me, uh, uh, follow us on Twitter, uh, email us, call, and join us in our meetings. Thank you very much. Um, and just so you know, you can also call into our meeting. We'll make sure that there's a telephone capacities if you can't be physically present. Any questions for Mary? Okay, thank you. <laughs>